Matt, another group of hostages released today. Um, it went to the wire, this one. There was a dispute over the number of hostages and whether the bodies of some hostages would be released or not. It did go ahead. The exchange happened. We can show you these pictures. They show the moment that fighters from Hamas's military wing handed over 21-year-old Mia Shem and Amit Susana to members of the International Committee of the Red Cross. And as you can see, they're surrounded by a very large crowd in Gaza City. It's significant that it's Gaza City, by the way, most um, of the hostage releases have happened in the south. Mia Shem, you might remember, was taken from the Nova Music Festival and appeared in the first Hamas hostage video inside Gaza. I also wanted to bring you these pictures also. It's the moment Mia Shem was reunited with her mother and brother not very long ago. So very, very emotional scenes there. Also in the last few hours, it's been confirmed to us that a man called Avi Vatsili, who is a hostage from the Near Oz kibbutz, he has not survived. He's, he, he was killed. His wife, Liat, was released yesterday. Again and again, talking to these families, you're hearing about the sort of ecstasy of hearing of one family member's release and then the agony of hearing of another, another family member who has not survived. That in mind, we went down to the Near Oz uh, kibbutz uh, yesterday to meet the friends and family of that couple. The ceasefire has been extended for another day. Hamas have indicated that they're ready to release Israeli civilian men for a longer truce and more comprehensive conditions. Last night, another 10 Israeli hostages were handed over inside Gaza. One of them, 49-year-old Liat Beni Natsili, from the Near Oz kibbutz. This evening, we were told that her husband, Aviv, was killed. And in the fields around the kibbutz where he used to work, the harvest, avocados, and assault rifles. A group of volunteers help rebuild, help keep broken spirits high. And many of them, like Mayan Golani, have friends and family who are missing or dead. Our kibbutz is so green and beautiful, but the houses are burned. It will be very tough to, to come back to the community, to come back to the kibbutz. We also meet Inbar. Her brother-in-law's family survived the attack on the 7th. From this kibbutz alone, 76 people were kidnapped, 41 murdered. Together, around a quarter of its residents. What remains? The scars of the atrocity. The markings on the homes indicate they've been cleared of explosives and Hamas fighters. Inbar collects some things for her brother-in-law. He directs over the phone. <laughs> Next door, the home of Liat and Avi Vatsili. We were informed that she's going to be released today, so we are... Liat released last night, Aviv confirmed dead this evening. Liat was alone when Hamas attacked. They set the house on fire. The smoke forced her outside the safe room and she was taken. Six days of ceasefire in Gaza, but violence continues to flare in the West Bank and this morning in Jerusalem. Two brothers opened fire at a bus stop. Three people were killed, including an elderly rabbi. CCTV of the incident shows both assailants being shot dead on the spot. Hamas claimed responsibility for the attack. The truce only applies inside Gaza and at an Israeli position overlooking the Strip, we meet Major Shraga Stern. His reserve infantry unit have been fighting inside Gaza. Some or and or now during the lull in fighting, but going back in to take up defensive positions. His view, ceasefire, what ceasefire? We're just holding our fire for the moment, but it's not the end of the war yet for us. H how do you adapt your offensive for the fact that there may be hostages in those neighborhoods? Yeah, well, um, sub, we have some intelligence about that, which I can't speak about. For me, as a, as a ground soldier, I get the green light to move in. And when that happens, we move in full force, shield by fire. So we don't adapt our, uh, our uh, warfare or our tech tactics to that. 
whether yeah. you dispute the figures or not. I mean, we are talking about thousands and thousands of dead civilians. Yeah. So is that working? Is that working? Um, yeah, I think uh, Gaza right now is a very, very dangerous war zone. And um, it's, look, I don't know if the right way to measure it is a uh, body count. I'm not sure that a body count would be the right approach. Well, it's one way if you're Palestinian, but, I suppose. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. It could, I guess so. But I've, to the Palestinians, I, I would say that the responsibility, uh, the IDF is doing a lot to preserve their lives. And their responsibility for their own lives is leaving before we announce that we're coming in. In Gaza, another day of temporary truce is a short window to survey the damage. Almost 15,000 people have been killed here since the war began. The UN says the majority, 70%, are women and children. Back at the Israeli infantry unit overlooking the Strip, a new round of artillery ready if the truce ends. Whose life will this destroy? The family of a teacher from the Wirral who is stuck in Gaza are appealing for help from the Foreign Office to help get her home safely. Islam Alashi is a Palestinian national with a visa to remain in the UK, while her husband and their twins are British citizens. She travelled to Gaza to visit her sick father before the conflict began and is now stuck in a refugee camp in Khan Yunus. Our North of England correspondent, Claire Fallon, has this report. When the war started, every five minutes, 100 being killed, 200 being killed, kids, women. There is nothing safe. Waiting for word from Gaza, where for two months, Fayez Jaoui's wife, Islam, has been waiting to be allowed to come home. Um, I could see you now why she's online. What is she saying? <sighs> she was telling me that, uh, my darling, we uh, just... Uh, are you going to pick up the kids? When the war started, yes. Islam was visiting her father. Right now, she's here, living in a tent, longing to be back home with her husband and two children. It's very hard for me. I really want to be with them. They're calling me all the time when I have any internet connection, telling me, Mama, when are you coming back? And I say, soon. Soon is said in hope, not certainty. At times, there have been long hours between the calls home. Uh Hello? Hi, hello. Hi, uh, yeah, we just about to arrive to pick up the kids from the school, so I am with the Channel 4 now. Even with the ceasefire, keeping in contact hasn't been easy. But how are you doing at the moment? I, I, can't, I can't say it's, it's a, you know, Claire, so it, it's really hard. It's really hard. We're still suffering. We, we, still, we, we still need a, a help keeping things as normal as possible for their twins, Lamar and Omar, is more difficult on some days than others. Hiya. Hiya. Today will be one of the toughest because mum isn't with them and it's their fifth birthday. What have you been saying to the twins? The twins... So, from the second night of the war, they refused to sleep around self, so they have to come to my room every single night. So, I tried to hug them, read them a little story, and uh, Omar especially was telling me, where is my mom? Are you going to give yours to him? Lamar, my daughter, she knows. If you ask about what's going on in Gaza, she will tell you there is a war in Gaza. She said to me, I know my mom, she's not safe in Gaza. Their daughter's right. Her mum is not safe. She's among the hundreds of thousands who moved north to south in Gaza looking for shelter. Our dad's house, my grandfather's house, has been completely destroyed at that time. And then we did not have any shelter. Islam Alashi grew up in Gaza but lives on the Wirral. It's where her children were born and where she teaches English to refugees. Now she's sharing a tent with her father, sister and niece at a vast refugee camp, 10 miles from the border with Egypt, but so far she hasn't been allowed to cross. Illness is everywhere because of dirty water, because of lack of food, 
they can't find food easily, they can't go to the toilets as well. We don't have any toilets. You know, if we want to go to the toilet, we have to use the sand. Last week when the rain started, can you imagine taking like a container to just have a sip of water from the rain? Drinking rainwater? Yes, there is no water. But now she can drink a little bit because the, you know, the, there is some... Some aid is now getting aid's in. Aid's going in and stuff, yeah. The ceasefire that means more aid getting in also means fewer people getting out. Though the UK government says hundreds have already returned and Foreign Office staff are in contact with people who've registered to leave. For now, Fires and the Twins are still waiting. They've been told Islam's name has been passed to border officials. Things should happen soon. For them, that can't come soon enough.